Hello, in Forest Scenes, a collection of pieces for piano by Robert Schumann, we find number 7, Vogel als Prophet, that has many appoggiaturas. We'll study this piece and see how Schumann makes sublime use of these non-chordal notes as main elements in the A section. Also, I'll demonstrate their usage in a short composition example. Robert Schumann finished the bundle Waldzenen Op. 82 in the year 1849. Listening to this set of piano pieces I was struck by the unique and particular musical idiom in number 7, Vogel als Prophet, where the A section is full of arpeggios with appoggiaturas. After a formal and harmonic analysis we'll focus on the usage of these dissonant non-chordal notes as main compositional element. I hope you will accompany me on this discovery journey where Schumann demonstrates amazing and masterly control of the effect. I'll conclude this video with a short application example. Before listening to the piece and studying the appoggiaturas in detail, you'll see the formal and harmonic analysis. This fairly short piano piece in G minor has perfect symmetry in a ternary form ABA. The middle B section is significantly shorter than the outer A sections and is in the parallel G major key. The dynamics are soft between pianissimo and mezzo forte. And on first listening this piece to me sounded like early impressionism. There is no real melody in the A section. Instead we find a set of arpeggio phrases with AAB structure. Also the left hand frequently plays arpeggio chords. The AAB phrase structure is also used in the middle section. These arpeggios start with ascending or descending appoggiaturas that may yield dissonant clashes with the other harmony parts. Listen to the audio export from the Dorico score and read along with the annotations. Next you'll see a harmony reduction of the A section. 
The combination of right-hand arpeggios and left-hand chords leads to a white compass. I've indicated the local key centers, all from the diatonic G Aeolian minor modal scale. The AAB arpeggio phrases display plagal 1 for 1 cadences in minor. We find the number of dominant tonic 5 to 1 cadences. For example, in the approach to the relative major key B flat major. You'll observe increased harmonic density in the middle phrase of the A section with stepwise chromatic motion in the lower parts. Listen to this reduced harmony. Now you'll discover the usage of the main element, the many appoggiaturas in this Schumann piano piece. Please fasten your seat belts for an appoggiatura crash course. The overview is shown here with typical appoggiatura cases, which are downbeat and stressed non-chordal notes that will move stepwise, either chromatically or diatonically, into a chordal function. The first example is the chromatically ascending F sharp into the chordal function 5, the note G in the C major triad. The next example shows the diatonic descent from A natural into the same chordal function 5. Note that this pitch is absent from the lower part's chord voicing. When the chordal function is present in the chord voicing, we get a dissonant interval between the appoggiatura and the lower parts. Here, the major seventh interval between G and F sharp. This is a nice effect and therefore totally acceptable in music writing. However, when the appoggiatura is in the lower part and the chordal function is present in the upper harmony, as shown in this example, the dissonant becomes a ninth. Here a minor ninth between F sharp in the bass and G natural in the lead. In general, these cases are forbidden in traditional classical harmony courses. You'll see later that Schumann has the courage to ignore this limitation. You may also find multiple simultaneous appoggiaturas. This example shows double downbeat dissonances either in parallel or in contrary motion, with a combination of chromatic and diatonic steps. And now you'll discover how Schumann uses appoggiaturas in the A section of Vogel als Prophet. I counted the occurrences and this table presents the overview, where we can see whether Schumann complies with the craftsmanship rules and where he shows his personal mastery. The total number is 40 appoggiaturas in the 18 measures long A section. The majority of these are the standard chromatic ascending types into chordal function root and 5. Descending types, mostly diatonic, are found in the approach of the 3rd and 5th of the chord. At first I thought the standard 9 to 1 descending appoggiatura was missing, but depending on how you read the pitch C in measures 2 and 3, either as a passing tone in G minor or as the root of an inverted and incomplete C dominant 7 chord, these may be counted as two occurrences of 9 to 1. Then there is the unusual ascending approach to the dissonant chordal function 7 in the middle phrase of the section, including the forbidden dissonance clash when the appoggiatura is in the lower part. Undoubtedly, the specific mood of this piece is dominated by the use of this element. If you think this bean counting procedure, identifying appoggiatura types and classifying them is total madness, 
Let me tell you that I've done the same thing for entire Richard Strauss symphonic poems. A composer who is another master at using these downbeat, non-chordal and dissonant patterns. Let's inspect the arpeggio plus appoggiatura types in the A section in simplified rhythmical notation. We start with the standard chromatic ascending approach to chordal function 5 in the opening measure. The fifth does occur in the left hand chord voicing, creating a dissonant major 7th interval. In the original score this does not sound prominently as the left hand plays an arpeggio. In measure 3 there is the string of arpeggios belonging to the B phrase, with a mix of ascending descending, chromatic and diatonic appoggiaturas. Chordal functions are absent in the left hand except for the last instance. This pattern is repeated for the second AAB phrase starting in measure 5, on the minor 5th degree, D minor. The B phrase in measure 7 is slightly different, with two dissonant major 7th intervals and a chromatic stepwise approach of the root in the F major triad. In the middle phrase starting in measure 9, Schumann broadens his appoggiatura application spectrum. The arpeggio patterns move in imitation to the left hand, and we find the forbidden minor 9th interval from D in the bass to E flat in the right hand. Just for the fun of it, listen to this dissonant clash of pitches C. D and E flat in a static sustained chord rendering. The white spacing over two octaves somewhat softens the dissonant effect, making it acceptable. Schumann steps up the procedure with two left hand appoggiaturas in measure 11. In C minor, the fifth is approached ascending, with the G omitted in the right hand, making this acceptable. But then, the chord G, my mistake in the score label, is approached from another F sharp and combined with the minor 7 F natural and root G, one octave higher. Playing this dissonant quasi cluster in isolation, I think we've reached the tension apex, right at the golden section point in this outer section, and I assume that Schumann did this on purpose. Here's another appoggiatura string, back to the right hand in the B subphrase and marked in the original score with forte piano accents. It's a mix of ascending descending, chromatic and diatonic patterns. Most yield dissonant major 7 intervals, with the exception of B flat in the lead over A natural in the bass in the middle, a minor 9th and the combination of minor 7 F natural and the appoggiatura F sharp in the G dominant 7th chord. The minor 9th clash between upper B flat and A natural in the bass is softened by the 2 octave separation. The open major 7 interval F sharp to F natural is a stronger dissonant that could have been softened by a chord tone in the middle, but Schumann decided not to do so. The middle phrase closes with an appoggiatura string on cardinal functions 5, 3 and 1 on the standard cadence second inversion tonic to dominant to tonic minor. The surprise is the final left hand arpeggio on the D dominant 7 chord. In terms of dissonant intervals, we first hear the three note clash on the G minor over D. Plus this wonderful combination of major 7th C sharp in the bass, with open minor 7th and chordal function 3 of the D dominant 7 in the right hand. This superposition of major 7th interval and augmented 4th 
yields a sound that is worthy of a Bartok signature. Let's conclude the Appoggiatura discovery journey with a short application example. For this I use a chord progression starting on G minor, like the Schumann piece, but including three third order compound Riemannian transformations. Here are the chords in staff notation and the parts connecting triad pairs in the Tonnets diagram. I won't go into details. You may find these in my four episode series on Riemannian transformations on this channel. The combination of G minor and B major through the PLP transformation is a hexatonic pair. The second phrase, from G minor to G flat or equivalently F sharp major, is the LPR or slide transformation with common pitch B flat, the minor third in the source and the major third in the destination triad. The third statement is another hexatonic pair, starting on G flat major and ending on the D minor triad. This progression is turned into an instrumental form for band, rhythm section, vibraphone and trombones with a series of appoggiaturas of various types in the lead, occasionally quoting Schumann. Read along with the annotated score. Hopefully you've gained something out of this closer look at Schumann's Vogel als Prophet. Our discovery journey started at the global level, recognizing the ternary form and listing the basic harmonies. Then we zoomed in on the real beauty and unique aspect of the A section, the continuous usage of arpeggio plus appoggiatura patterns without a traditional melody. I listed all appoggiatura types in the piece, demonstrating where and how Schumann controls the effect and creates an amazing tension curve throughout the phrases. And finally, I wanted to show how you may construct a new composition with appoggiaturas as the main element in the lead parts. If you like this type of video, please subscribe to the channel, where I share many free ideas and techniques for music composition. However, I do welcome financial support for my tutorial productions. Follow the link in the description and make a PayPal donation. On the website there's more content and a number of ebooks in the webshop. Goodbye for now, hope to see you back on this channel and thanks for watching.